Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining this Estimator Express Software Skills course. My name is Olivia and I'm going to be your trainer today and for the duration of this course. Uh, it looks like everyone's present and correct, so we can make a start. Um, so as I said, my name is Olivia. I am um, the trainer, one of the trainers at uh, HB Excel. Um, I train on Estimator Express and Plans Express as well. So yeah, I do training at HBXL. I also uh, create a lot of the help materials. So if you ever look at the help videos and other help materials on um, our website, our support website, then uh, it may be that you hear a bit more of my voice on those videos. Um, I'm a qualified teacher by training. I've been at HBXL um, for about six years now. Um, so pretty familiar with the software and hope to pass on some of that knowledge to you. In module one, we're going to estimate several elements of the job using a standard job template. We're going to estimate a range of different parts of the job. So some of them are construction based. Some of them will be prelims and subcontract costs and so on. But the idea is that I will give you um, an overview of how the estimating uh, engine works so that you've got the skills and the understanding you need in order to complete a com uh, an estimate in your own time. So we obviously can't um, do a complete detailed estimate in our hour, hour and a half that we've got today, but I will um, talk you through a range of different elements of the estimate. So for the purposes of today's training, we're going to imagine that we're estimating a really simple lean to extension. So I've popped these graphics up so you can see um, the kind of thing we're talking about. So it's a brick and block single story lean to extension with um, bifolds and a window that we're putting in. Okay, so if you can hold that image in your head, that will be helpful while we uh, go through the training. So we're going to move over to Estimator Express now. So for those of you who have Estimator Express, hopefully it's open and you're looking at this screen. So this is called the dashboard screen. So whenever you open your software, you will start here. Um, if you're not on the dashboard screen, if you've clicked onto something else, on this menu on the left hand side at the top, you can click dashboard and it will take you back to this screen. So from the dashboard, you can open an existing job. So if you've already started some estimating, you'll see I've got a list of uh, various estimates that I've been working on on uh, the left hand side here. You can also create a new uh, estimate. On the left hand side of the screen, we have uh, what we call the navigator. So the navigator allows you to navigate your way around the software. So if you want to move to a different screen, you will use the navigator on the left hand side. So from this screen, we can open the job screen, the group job screen, and also the uh, software library. Um, you can click on an item uh, to move to that uh, part of the software, or you can use the arrows here to, to expand and minimize the options. So within the library, there's, there are several different um, components of the software there. So just to let you know, you can click on an item or you can use the, the arrows to open up different options. At the top of the screen, we've got what we call the ribbon. So that's like a toolbar and it has multiple tabs. So depending on which screen you are on, there are different tabs. So here we've got the dashboard tab, We've also got the settings tab and we've got the help tab. So if we go back to the dashboard tab, you can see from here you can create a new job. The settings tab contains lots of the software settings. I won't go into all of that now, um, but one area that you might want to have a quick look at, if you press the Estimator Express options, that loads up a window. And from here you can update your registered user details. So you see there's lots of options on the left hand side. If you click registered user, which is the fifth one down, you can see your company um, name and address details there. So if you've typed them in hastily and they need changing, you can do it here or if your address changes or your company name, that's uh, where you would update those details. OK, there's various other options there. So um, it may be that's something that you want to explore if there's a particular setting that you need to change, but we won't worry about that for now. So I'm going to close that down 
Okay, so that's your quick orientation of the screen. So we've got what we call the ribbon at the top, toolbar at the top. We've got the navigator to move around the software on the left-hand side. And then we've got the main part of the screen. So what I'd like you to do is on the navigator on the left-hand side, click where it says jobs. And that will take you to the jobs screen. Now, the job screen contains all of your estimates that you've been working on. It might be empty at the moment, that's fine. Um, but you can see from my screen that it um, has all of the job details and the job status. So if you just um, cast your eye across the screen, you'll, say, you'll see we've got the job name, a number that's assigned, a brief description of what the job is, the client's name, costs, and when it was last opened, when the build program was last updated, and its status. If you want to change any of the job details, you can use this edit button on the right hand side here. So you click on the estimate that you want to change the details for, and then you can change its name or its description or its status. So the idea of a job status is that you can keep tabs on where all of your different jobs are up to. Um, it allows you to measure the success of your estimates. Um, so we've got six different statuses for if you're in the process of estimating, if you have um, shown the quote to the customer and you're waiting for them to uh, give you the go ahead or otherwise, if you've won the job but you haven't yet started, uh, when construction started, when the job's complete, and there's uh, one last category that we hope you won't have to use much of, which is unsuccessful quote if you don't win the job. So by updating those job statuses, you can uh, keep track of where your jobs are up to and how successful everything is. I'm going to close that down for now. So from the My Job screen, you'll see on the ribbon at the top, we've got a few different options here. Again, you can create a new job. So you can create, start creating your job from the dashboard or from this job screen. There's the option to open a job, so you can open up any of the jobs in your list. There's the copy job button. That one is actually really useful. There's a couple of different scenarios where you might use it. Firstly, you might want to make adjustments to an estimate, but want to keep the original version. So you can make a copy and do that, so you can keep the original and an updated version. The other uh, reason you might want to use this button is if you uh, are needing to estimate a job and you've done one that's very very similar in the past or even the same if you're doing a couple of um, new build properties that are almost identical you can copy um, an estimate update the um, customer's details and so on make any tweaks or adjustments to it as you need to but it will obviously save you loads of time then we've got the delete job button that will delete your estimate from your computer altogether so you need to exercise care when using that button. Once it's deleted, unless you've made a backup, it's going to be gone for good. And then we've got um, an import job button. So if you have multiple licenses of Estimator Express, you um, can move an estimate from one machine to another. Um, also, if you have backed up a job, you saved it somewhere else on your computer, you can re-import it into the software using that, that button. So it has a couple of purposes. So that's the My Job screen. And of course, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a job. So to do that, we're going to click the first button on the ribbon at the top of the screen, the Create New Job button. So if you click Create New Job, then you get a, um, a list of four different options, four different ways you can create your job. So I'll just talk you through what those different options are just seeing a question pop up here rich is asking can we import a job that we have previously estimated for you richard that's a slightly tricky question because we have recently upgraded to estimator express 2020 so that's what you got installed on your machine the software that our estimators use is um, I think they're still running an older version of Estimator Express. I think they're still running 2018. They've had loads of tweaks and add-ons to their version of the software, um, which haven't yet been um, added onto Estimator Express 2020. So I believe at the moment, if it's an old estimate from the estimating service, 
you won't be able to import it into Estimator Express 2020, I'm afraid. But going forward, once the estimating, estimating service moves on to Estimator Express 2020, then um, are you due to receive it today? I've, I've, I will double check for you, but I, I believe they're still um, running an older version of Estimator Express, which isn't forwards compatible, unfortunately, with um, Estimator Express 2020. But I'll double check it because they, I know they're keen to move on to the, the new version of Estimator Express. They want all the benefits uh, that you guys have got. But I'll double check and let you know about that, Richard. OK, so four different ways of creating an estimate. So the first way uh, we're going to be looking at during the training today, you can use a standard job template, um, picking from a list of pre-designed job templates for new builds, bungalows, extensions, conservatories, garages. Um, so we have templates already set up for those different types of job with various configurations. We've also got what we call any shape templates. So there's any shape extensions or any shape new builds, which um, you can use to estimate those types of work. If you're estimating something that doesn't fall into those categories, so for example, if you wanted to do um, renovation work or um, a loft conversion, we don't yet have standard job templates for loft conversions. So if you wanted to estimate that type of work, then you would use the second option to quote from a custom job template. Uh, this option allows you to estimate non-standard builds, renovation jobs, um, and anything that we don't have the template set up for, basically. The third option is to quote from a Plans Express import. So if you decide that you want to uh, use Plans Express to, to design um, your projects, or if you want to use Plans Express to, um, to take off. So what you can do is you can import plans into Plans Express, trace over them to take off the measurements, and then import your takeoff into Estimator Express. And that's a, a different way of doing your estimating. So um, if that's something you're interested in, then you can uh, let, let us know about that, um, because that obviously does speed up your estimating. If um, Estimator Express already knows the, the dimensions of your plans. And then finally, we have a, an option to quote from scratch. So um, you can use estimating calculators, which are um, the engine of the software, basically. Um, if you quote using estimating calculators, there's a bit more uh, in the way of dimension entry, because it doesn't know um, the configuration of the job that you're working on. So um, it takes a little bit more time, but it actually the, the real benefit of it is that it gives you great flexibility. So if you're doing um, some more complex work or you want to estimate something very specific, then that, that might be uh, the route that you want to go down. But for most standard jobs, as the name suggests, a standard job template will, will be the quickest and easiest way of creating your estimate. Um, Paul has asked, what about a combination of both top two? So, yeah, if you were doing, say, um, some work where you were doing an extension on a house and you were also um, doing some renovation in other rooms within the house and you were doing some landscaping in the garden, I don't know, building a detached garage, all of those can be done. You can start with a standard job template and add bolt on extra bits to it um, so you can you can do a combination for sure okay so we're going to click the top option quote from a standard job template and when we click that it will open up the quote template library so I'm going to make mine full screen so there's a button on the top of the window here that you can click and it will expand that window so it fills your screen can be um, easier to, to look, have an overview of, of the library screen if you do that. So you'll see this is a list of all the different templates that are already in the software. So we've got extensions, conservatories, we've got bungalows, we've got houses, we've got garage extensions, and we've got uh, detached garages. So 
you can filter this list so you can focus in on the, the type of job that you're um, interested in. So at the top of the screen, there's a, a drop down called building type. If you click on that, you can see there are the, the different categories there in the list. So if we click extension, the list is shortened and then we're just looking at extensions and conservatories are included in that list. There's also another drop down here, which is for the wall finish. So if you click on that, you can see you can change to render or stone. That doesn't just change the, the appearance of the, the pictures in the library. It's also going to specify an appropriate wall type. So you're starting the specification process at this um, early stage. So if you make sure that brick is selected, um, I'm just briefly going to talk about what is estimated when you're um, se selecting an extension template. It might seem really obvious. Um, hopefully, it, hopefully it does, and I apologise um, if that's the case. I think to bring up my PowerPoint, I'm going to have to just close this window down briefly. So apolog apologies for that. All right then. So really simple diagram here. So when you select an extension template, so say we've selected an Apex um, extension like this, what the software will allow you to do is estimate for forming the opening in the connecting wall. So it knows there's an existing wall there. You've got to, you've got to form the opening um, and uh, make good afterwards. So it will allow for the estimating of that. It will also um, allow for the, the plastering to the existing wall. So it knows that that wall is going to need to be plastered as well as obviously all of the walls within the extension itself. And then of course, it's going to, it's going to estimate for all of the other components of the extension. So it's going to estimate your external walls, your internal walls, if you have any, um, your windows, your doors, internal doors, external doors, the roof, the ceiling, and so on. So when you select an extension template, it's going to allow you to estimate all of those different elements. Okay, so I'm gonna click back to my software, go back to creating my job. So the template that we're going to select, filter it is the lean to single story extension. So it's the fifth template in the list there, lean to single story extension. So if you just single click on that, that will select the template. So the software might take a moment. It will be slightly slower over GoToWebinar. Anything over the internet um, slows down the running of your computer a little bit. So apologies if this takes a little bit longer than usual. So the software is now going to open up that quote template. Here we go. So we're now within the estimate, we're looking at the main quote template screen. Now each main quote template screen starts with a diagram. And this is where you enter the overall dimensions of the building. So for this lean to extension, it's really very simple. We've only got two dimensions to enter. But of course, if you selected a house template, there would be um, more work for you to do at this point. So the main quote template uses the dimensions that we enter here to autofill. It automatically fills in data within the walls, the roof, the floors, the ceilings and so on based on the dimensions here. So it can work out the area of ceiling. It can work out the total length of external walls. Um, so you enter the dimensions here once and it will filter through to uh, various different parts of the estimate. So if we leave the, the width of the estimate set to three meters, you'll see the units are shown here. So we're working in meters. Um, let's change the length of the extension to five meters. So click into the input, the input box. You can press the, the uh, backspace key on your keyboard to delete what's in there. And then just type in five. You don't need to type in the um, decimal place uh, and all the zeros. Just if you click five, then press the enter key on your keyboard or click elsewhere on screen. 
and the software takes a moment because what it's doing is it's updating the job cost at the top right hand uh, corner so each time you tweak a dimension the job cost updates real time so your first job is to type in those overall building dimensions now if we work our way down the screen so this is quite a long screen so the the key to working your way through the, the main quote template is to to scroll down do each section um, at a time so underneath the um, main quote template um, dimensions we've then got a series of estimating options and, and key dimensions again the data from the options here will filter through to the different elements of the build so for example there's um, options here to allow for plastering and allow for decoration if you leave those ticked then you will see that um, everywhere where that you might want to plaster or decorate will include plastering and decoration so obviously the walls the ceilings the window door um, opening reveals they will all automatically be set to be plastered and decorated conversely if you untick those options um, decoration will be removed automatically from all of those different elements so what we're doing here is we're setting up the specification for the um, entire estimate of course you can then go in and fine-tune different things if you don't need to decorate one particular element you can go in and switch the decoration off but we're these are like the global settings for the whole estimate so if we leave plastering and decoration ticked so that we do include those elements throughout the estimate that would be good and then we'll just continue working our way through the different options here have a read of each of the different options so allow for internal finishing to the external walls yeah we'll leave that ticked this is the next one is one that you'll need to consider more often decorate fascias and soffits so if you are um, fitting softwood fascias and soffits then you're likely to want to decorate them so you'd want to tick that box if you're using um, PVCU ones then um, obviously you'd leave that unticked then we've got some of the key dimensions so we've got the cavity wall foundation depth below site strip set to um, 900 mil by default so all of these dimensions will have sensible default figures in there but of course um, you're going to need to review them and they will need changing um, where the ground's less stable you're going to need a, a deeper foundation so of course you can um, change that here if you need to so let's say we need our foundations to be 1.2 meters again we're working in meters here so make sure you type in meters not millimeters otherwise you're going to be out by a factor of a thousand so type in 1.2 meters into the cavity wall foundation depth now we're currently clicked into this input box here and then to move into the next input box we can use a key on the keyboard if you press the tab key it will move you onto the next row to the next input box so a really quick way of updating dimensions and moving through the different options is to um, use your keyboard type in the dimension then press the tab key it will move you to the next box so we'll leave the um, single skin foundation depth set to 0.9 for now next input is the ceiling height set to 2.4 meters so you can tweak that if needs be if it needed to be 2.3 or 2.475 or whatever you could change it but we'll leave it as it is for now next the roof pitch this is obviously something you're going to need to consider each time let's say this is going to be uh, quite a low pitch roof so let's set it to 22 degrees and then I'm pressing the tab key to move to the next input box you'll see the software pauses for a moment as it updates job costs because obviously changing the pitch of the roof is going to change the uh, area of it and the uh, material requirements and the time that it will take to um, to fit the timbers and um, lay the tiles and so on so when the software pauses that's what it's doing it's doing a recalculation so tile lath spacing or um, spacing of your battens uh, sometimes known as that's set to 0.3 which is correct for a modern style pan tile if you're using plain tiles clay tiles then that might need changing to 0.1 100 mil 
uh, spacing. So that's something you need to review each time. And then we've got a couple of uh, final options here to do the soffit widths to the eaves and the soffit widths uh, to the width to the gables. I'm going to leave those as they are for now, but of course, with each job, you can tweak them as you need. So Paul has said, what if there is a requirement for specific insulation or inner leaf block work? So if um, a particular block or particular type of insulation needs to be specified, then we can change that within um, the section of the, S the uh, quote that deals with um, the external walls. And I'll, I'll show you that um, shortly because the external walls is the first element that we'll go in and estimate. So I'll show you how you can swap resources uh, when we when we look at the external walls. OK, so we've typed in the overall dimensions of our um, extension and we've we've been through these key options and dimensions and updated them as we need to. We've got another button here called standard settings. So it's just at the top of um, this section we've been working on. If you click standard settings, we have standard settings for these different elements of the estimate. So if we focus in on roofs, for example, we've got options such as are there barge boards to the gables? Um, is the roof covered with sarking board, which is routinely done north of the border? Um, are there eaves fascia boards and so on? What's the joist centres for the cut roofs? What's the rafter centres for cut roofs? You'll see from the figures, they're all set to really sensible default figures. But if you work, tend to work in a slightly different way, you can update these settings here and you can save them for all future jobs that you do. Um, if you change something within the standard settings, the um, changes that you make, again, will filter through to different parts of the estimate. So if you uh, make changes to your roof standard settings, if this applies even more if you're doing a more complex job. So if you're doing a house that's got a, um, an, a main apex roof and a couple of valleys on it, and you've got a, a section of lean-to roof as well, if you change the standard settings here, click OK, that change will be, be applied to all of the different sections of roof within your quote, within your estimate. So if you spend a bit of time getting these standard settings set up correctly, um, you can apply those settings to your entire estimate. You could also click this button here, save as defaults, and it will save those settings for future estimates that you do. So if you need to make some tweaks to the software so that it works just the way you do, save those settings, you only have to do that uh, process go through that process once and the software will remember how you like to work so if you are north of the border and you do use sarking board it's going to include it in your estimate every single time so i'm just showing you around this for now we're not going to make any changes within here but i just want to point out that this is um where these options are so it may be that some um elements of the settings are not relevant to you so if you don't do work with ICF or SIPS walls, then you're not going to need to look at those. Um, there are some options for multi-leaf brick walls in there as well. So when you've got a few minutes to yourself, uh, you can spend a bit of time just looking down the list and tweaking anything uh, if you need to. It may be that you don't need to, that you're happy with these as your, your standard settings, your starting point for your estimates. OK, so we're going to click OK to come out of there. And we're then going to have a look at the resource specification. So you might need to scroll down a little bit. And the next section is the resource specification. Within there, there is a button called Edit Specification and Mini Specs. So in this section, we can change the defaults that the software is working with to something more suited to your particular job. So the software has automatically selected an extension specification because we selected an extension template to start with. Um, we're going to come back around next week to looking at the specifications within the job. If I just click on the drop down box here, you'll see that out of the box, the software comes with multiple different specifications set up for different types of work. 
So we've got new build specifications. They assume long runs of work, that things will be straightforward, that there's not going to be issues of access and, and care of existing buildings and so on. So um, the new build specifications allow the quickest build times, basically. The extension and renovation specs um, allow for things to take a, a little bit longer. So it, um, the build times are slightly longer on the extension spec and the renovation spec um, because of issues like access. So with an extension, it may be um, that things take longer um, because you've got reduced access or um, that you need more time to um, protect the existing building and so on. We also have some timber frame specifications as well. Um, as I said, we're going to look at specifications in detail next week. Um, so for now, we'll just go with the um, the default extension specification that the software has selected. I should also mention you can create your own specifications. So I've got one in my list here called my very creatively called my extension spec. So you can create your own specifications, and at this point you could select them. Again, we'll look at that next week. So for now, let's stick with the extension spec. I should also say the extension spec um, for the um, default um, mode of excavation, it assumes you're going to use a mini digger and driver, whereas the new build specification um, uses a JCB backhoe loader. Uh, so that's one of the other key differences. OK, so once you've selected your main specification, you can then tweak and fine tune some of the key elements of the job. So first of all, we've got an option for external wall brickwork. So how the software works is you can select a price allowance for the type of brick you're going to use. So if the customer specified a 95p uh, facing brick, you can select 95 pence facing brick. There are also reclaimed facing bricks in there as well. Uh, we have two variations, so we've got 95 pence facing brick for an extension or innovation, and then we've got a 95, uh, 95 pence sorry, facing brick for a new build. And again, the differences between those two options are the build speeds. So because we're um, working on an extension estimate, we're going to use the 95p facing brick for extension or innovation. So... Let's say, let's select the 90p facing brick, just for argument's sake. If you were um, building um, cavity block walls, if there are rendered walls or stone-faced walls or whatever, you could just skip over that option. If it's not relevant to what you're doing, um, you can just ignore it. So the next option is for the roof tile type. So we've got pan tiles, plain tiles and slate tiles. Again, either for extension or renovation or new build. So we're going to go for pan tile for extension or renovation. You may notice I've got an option at the top there that you haven't got in yours. And that's because I've created my own roof tiling mini spec option. And once you get more competent with the software and more confident with it, that's something that you can do. You can set up your own mini spec options in here so there is that flexibility within the software you're not restricted to what's uh, available out of the box so yeah for now we'll go for the pan tile for extension and then we've got a series of other options so roof guttering we've got plastic half round rectangular gutter of various sizes then there's everything from aluminium cast aluminium cast iron steel, zinc, and so on. So all you do is select the roof guttering uh, type that you're going to use and the software will automatically select all the relevant um, different components that you need for that particular gutter system. So for now, let's select, let's say, plastic rectangular gutter 68 mil to a round down pipe for argument's sake, it doesn't really matter. Um, but just so you know, these options are available. So then we've got flat roof waterproofing. We obviously don't have a flat roof for this job, so we can skip over that. Um, but if you were doing a flat roof extension, you can see we've got a, a wide range of different um, 
flat roof waterproofing systems that you can choose from. Then we've got fascias, barge boards and soffits to sloped roofs. So it's selected UPVC. If you click on the drop down box, you'll see we've got various different options there for softwood fascias and barge boards of different widths, depths. So we'll leave that set to UPVC for now. Remember, we've set the option to not decorate them. Um, but if you selected a softwood option, you'd need to make sure that you had elected to decorate your fascias and barge boards and so on. There's an equivalent option for flat roofs. So again, we can ignore that. It's not relevant. Then there's a, a decoration option. We'll leave that set to the default. And then finally, we've got, we've got an option um, to select how we're going to excavate. So if you look at the list, as I said, the extension specification by default uses a mini digger and driver. But if um, access were really restricted and you were using manual labor to do it, um, then you could select that option. Or equally, if on this particular job you're using JCB, then you could select that option. But we'll stick with mini digger and driver for now. So you can see how we're starting to tailor the estimate um, already. So once you've worked your way through those options, you can click OK. Software will take a moment as it recalculates the estimate based on our specification choices. And this is um, quite an interesting process in terms of um, budgeting, ensuring that you're keeping your estimate on track. Um, so Lucian's asked, does this assume we own the digger or hire it? Um, actually, the software um, doesn't mind, it is not interested actually in whether you own the digger or you hire it. And the reason for that is that it will charge for the use and the um, the labour to drive it um, because whether you own the digger or you hire it there are still costs associated with running it so if you own your digger you still need to um, pass on those costs in the estimate because the running of that digger costs your your uh, business money and it will come out of your um, profits so your net profits are impacted by purchasing and um, using plant as well as hiring it. So um, the software will charge for the use of it, whether you own it or hire it, if that makes sense. When we look at the price books and we look at the um, plant prices, we'll, we'll talk uh, in a bit more detail about that next week. OK, so um, you can see how you can uh, play around with things such as your facing brick prices and you can instantly see the impact on the job cost. So that's good for budgeting. That's good if you've got a client who needs to stick to a particular budget and you can talk to them about um, the various options and how it will impact on uh, costs. So I'm going to click OK to that. So we've done all the setting up of the estimate now. We have um, filled in the overall all dimensions, checked the key dimensions and estimating options. We've specified some of the key resources. So now um, we come to estimating the construction costs. So there are, the main quote template is split into various sections which deal with different elements of the job. So as we selected um, a, a brick finish when we were choosing the template, um, the main quote template has also automatically specified a brick and block cavity wall. You can, of course, change the specification of the wall at this point if you need to. So um, you can select an alternative one from the list. That's absolutely fine. If at this point you realize that the client wants a, a rendered wall, you can select an external cavity block wall. That's fine. If you have a multi-story um, building, so if you were estimating a house, there would be a separate drop down for the upstairs walls. So you can have different specs for your downstairs and upstairs if you're doing a half rendered half brick property or half stone, half brick or whatever. Half stone, half render, I mean. Half stone, half brick might look a little bit odd. Um, so yeah, this is where you select the specification of your walls. 
some headline data is shown here so you can see the overall wall width is 340 mil and the cavity width is 140 mil it may be um, if you are working on an extension that the wall widths need tweaking a bit so let's say the walls are 300 mil 0.3 wide and the cavity is 100 mil this is obviously set up for Partel spec walls so you can update those figures here so these are just some key figures for external walls that we can update from the main quote template screen however we can take a more in-depth look at the dimensions of the walls and what's going on behind the screen so there are two other buttons here we've got dims which stands for dimensions so this is the button you want to click if you want to check your dimensions and this one is to do with the resources so specified resources so we'll start by looking at the dimensions so sorry i'm just taking a quick sip of water if we click the dimensions button you'll see this screen opens up so this is the what we call the dimensions wizard so the dimensions wizard um, takes you through various dimensions that are associated with the wall from foundations up i'm just going to quickly click through to show you so it deals with foundations footings the wall itself and the finishing to the wall so i'm just going to go back to the start so the first page deals with the overall wall dimensions at the bottom of the screen there's some options here to show tech tips so these are little handy pointers that explain to you what it is that you need to enter for the different dimensions so if that's ticked and you click into an input box on the top right of the screen you get a tip a handy tip on the on that corner there so it's telling you what goes in for the height of wall or length of main wall and so on we've also got what we call tech labels those are just diagram labels they don't do much on the screen but you'll see um, as we go through that they can be quite useful so the wall height here that has been filled out based on the ceiling height that we entered on the main quote template uh, diagram when we when we first uh, opened up our coat template. The wall length here, that has also been calculated based on the, the dimensions we entered into the diagram. So it has combined um, the length of the two three meter walls plus the five meter wall. So it's worked out the total length of external wall. So as you can see, these input boxes are color coded. The ones highlighted in green simply mean the data comes from the main quote template. So it has taken these figures based on those overall dimensions that we entered into the diagram uh, of the overall dimensions of the extension. You can override this information. So you could change the wall length here if you wanted to, but then there's a, a possibility that things might get out of sync. So if you updated your wall length here, the roof section wouldn't necessarily know that your walls had changed unless you, unless you went into the roof and changed the figures in the roof. So if you realize this figure is wrong, the thing to do is to cancel out of it, go back to the um, main quote template diagram here, update the figure there, and then again that will filter through to the external walls and the roof and so on, and you'll know that everything is in sync. So whilst you can change the dimensions in here, you do so at your own peril. Um, you need to then ensure that everything is consistent and correct throughout the estimate. So if you need to make a change, the best thing to do is to go back to the main quote template diagram to change it there. Um, a yellow input box like this one um, indicates that the data has been set to a certain value by Estimator Express. So it's saying we've got one wall of these dimensions. Um, This is um, to do with how the software works. If you're estimating from scratch, you could, in theory, set that to two and have um, two walls of the same dimensions. But the way this template's working, it's saying it's working out the total length of the walls, and it's saying we've got one uh, length of wall with these dimensions in. So you, sh you shouldn't need to change any input boxes that are highlighted in yellow, basically. There's an option here to 
uh, enter the height of any coursing blocks if you're using them. We'll leave that set to zero for now. Okay, so if we click, um, oh, I should quickly mention that the Quote template has automatically calculated the area of gable on the side walls uh, based on the template selected, the wall dimensions, and obviously the roof pitch as well. So the gable's been accounted for. Then, if we click next, we can have a look at the foundation details. So just take a moment to click into the different input boxes and have a look at what each of the dimensions is referring to. Familiarize, familiarize yourself with that screen. Okay, so the first input box is the foundation width. Now that is highlighted in pink. Pink tells us, if you place your cursor over the box, actually it tells you where the information comes from. So it's saying that the foundation width is fed from the standard settings. So that is something you can change within your standard settings. If you want to make a change to the foundation width, width then you should uh, consider going back into the standard settings and changing the setting there, there as it may affect multiple parts of your estimate. So if you've got um, multiple uh, external walls, then that standard setting will obviously filter down to the, the various different walls. So you can see we've then got um, the foundation depth. That comes from the quote template dimension. So you'll remember that we changed the foundation depth to 1.2 meters. So you'll notice that we're just actually reviewing a lot of this information, not changing it. So we've got the depth of structural concrete, and then there's an option for a depth of mass concrete if you need it. Um, that's set to zero by um, default, but you can add a depth in if. Um, If um, I guess that's if you're working on less stable ground and you need deeper um, foundations. Paul's asked, is the width increased as the depth gets deeper? No, it's not automatically increased. So um, you're going to need to apply your, your judgment to that um, when you're estimating the walls. There's an option here to plank and strut the excavation, set to yes by default, um, but we can change that if need be. And then we've got this figure here about the bulking factor of excavated material. So that basically means how much um, how much more space does the soil occupy when it's excavated from the ground. And I believe um, on average it takes up about 50% more space. So what will happen is the software will work out the volume of um, the volume of the trench and then it will multiply that by 1.5 to work out how much space is needed in the skip or the tipper to remove um, that material from site. So you shouldn't need to uh, change that figure unless uh, you've got a significant reason for doing so. And then if we click next, the next screen deals with our footing details. So on this screen, the, the tech labels start to become a little bit more useful, I think. Um, again, you might want to look at the tech tips on the top right hand corner. So because we updated the cavity width and the wall width on the main quote template screen, it's updated them here as well. You can update them in either place. And it will um, update it, the software will update it in the other place. So um, just spend a moment, hover your cursor over each of the input boxes. It will tell you what each of the dimensions relates to. Um, as, as is the case everywhere in the software, we've got some sensible figures, starting point figures here, but obviously job by job, you're just gonna need to review these dimensions and see if there's anything which needs tweaking. Remember, the other way you can move between the input boxes is to press the tab key. So that's the quick way. If you need to review and change the dimensions, you can press your tab key. OK, 
Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. And then on the right hand side, we've got options for is the main wall insulated and is there a DPC, which of course are set to yes, but if for some particular reason you needed to change those settings, you could. So if we click next, the final screen then deals with the plastering and finishing details. Um, because we elected to include plastering and decoration throughout the estimate, those are set to yes by default. You could override them uh, for this particular element if you wanted to. So if you didn't want plastering and decoration to your external walls, for some reason you could uh, set these to no. Um, but nine times out of 10, they're gonna be correctly set. So you just need to cast your eye over them and then you can click finish. Rich has asked, does the software allow us to print out the spec to pass to the lads on site? Yeah, there are uh, ways of doing that, including um, uh, there's a, a section within the software which creates building regs notes, and that includes a detailed breakdown of um, the spec of the various elements of the job. Um, so that's something maybe I can show you on Thursday. We can have a quick dip into. So sorry, I'm just quickly reading your questions, trying to keep up with them. Does um, do the walls assume rendered and skimmed or plasterboard, dot and dab and skim? Um, the default method is plasterboard, dot and dab. Um, but I'll, what we'll do next is we'll have a look at the um, resources. So we'll see what's been, what exactly has been estimated um, for these particular walls. So if we want to review or change any of the resources, we can do that by clicking the resources button. So we're still in the external walls section. And then if we click resources, this opens up the um, resources wizard, as we call it. So this allows us to change individual items on the fly. So um, you might need to do that if the client has specified a, res a resource that isn't a part of the standard spec. So um, if we look at the example, let's have a look at the uh, plastering uh, example. So if we, you can see this first page is to do with foundations, then footings, then we've got the wall details here, including the uh, cavity insulation. Let's just pause on uh, cavity insulation for a second. So if you click on one of the labels, so we've got cavity insulation here, or uh, you can hover your mouse over it and it will tell you which resource is currently specified. So we've got um, cavity wall insulation, 100 by 450 by 1200 mil sheets. So 10 sheets covering 5.46 square meters. So that's cavity wall packs. When we come to the specifications, I'm going to look at how I'm going to show you how you can swap over your default cavity insulation. So if you use a Celotex type product, poly ISO board, by default, you can swap that over in the main specification. We can also just swap it over within this particular estimate. So once we've slip, uh, clicked on cavity insulation, you'll see underneath where it says resource used. There's a drop down box. So if we click down on that drop down box, the software is opening up the insulation section of the price book. So if we scroll down uh, within here, you'll see a long list of different insulation products. And if you keep going down, we've got poly ISO insulation board. So HPXL uses the generic name for Celotex Kingspan type products, it calls them poly ISO cyanurate. So what we can do is we could select one of those products instead. So you can see we've got the various different widths. So if we, if you scroll, you need to scroll down from where the um, price book opened up until you find poly, poly ISO insulation board 2400 by 1200 by 75 mil. We can click on that resource to select it. OK, so we're swapping the resource in. But of course, the old cavity packs and these insulation boards have different rates of usage. So you, you need to use a different amount of it um, per square meter. So what we need to do is update the rate of usage. 
so at the moment it's telling us um, that we are using 0.183 of the pack for a square meter. So, okay. To help you work out your usage factor, you need to click the uh, calculator icon here. And then just read through the workings here, the workings out here. So it's saying I use one of these polyiso insulation boards to do 5.46 square meters of cavity insulation. That's not quite correct because that coverage is um, what was correct for the old cavity packs. So we need to swap that over. So what we need to do is work out the area of the polyiso board. The polyiso so board is 2400 by 1200. Let me just Okay, you guys probably know this off the top of your head. So one of those poly ISO boards covers actually 2.88 square meters. So if we change that bottom figure, so what it's saying is for each one of those boards, we're gonna do 2.88 square meters of cavity insulation. So the usage factor has been updated here. So it's saying just over a third of a board will be used for each square meter. So that's, that sounds right. So click okay and then we can click OK again. So what we've done is we've swapped over the insulation type and we've changed the rate of usage to make sure that the software knows how much of a um, one of those new poly ISO boards it needs to use per square meter of cavity insulation. So Paul has asked, does it include wall ties? So we can see here, We've got the brick ties, um, clips. Yes, it does. And does it allow for wastage? So wastage um, is applied on all product types where you want it to be. That is set in the um, price book. So for bricks, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head what the wastage percentage is for bricks. I think it's, it's probably about 5%. It's 5% across a lot of items, but you can fine tune that per, for the different resource types. So wastage is included, yep, in answer to your question. And you can tweak that if you feel um, you want to within the price book. We'll look at that um, next week when we're looking at the settings that are underpinning all of this. Okay, so within the resources wizard, you can change over any of the resources. If we click next again, we can see the finishes. So if we look at the plastering to the inner block wall, click on plastering to inner block wall to select it, or you can hover over it and you can see at the moment we've got a square edge um, plasterboard being used, and then there's a plaster finish. And then you can see we've got the joint treatment. So we've got the tape, and we've also got the fixing system, so the plasterboard adhesive and so on. So again, if you want to, if you need to, to do some fine tuning of the resources, you can do it from here. So in the same way, you could select the plaster into the inner block wall from the resource use drop down box. Click on that drop down there. And you can select an alternative plasterboard. So it may be that you select a tapered edge plasterboard for whatever reason. So this is how you could swap resources over on a, um, an estimate by estimate basis. When we look at the specifications in more detail next week, I'll show you how you can swap those things over. So if you use a different plastering system by default, you can uh, set that up in the underlying specifications so that you don't have to make these changes on a job by job basis. So the system allows you to do it. Um, but, in th but in practice, what we want is for you to have your specif specifications set up to work the way you work. So if you use plasterboard, dot and dab and skim, then we want it set up with that already in there. If you, if you use poly ISO board, we want that set up in your key specifications so that when you select your specification, when you select the extension spec, it um, 
it instantly is using the resources that you use and then you don't have to go through this process every time. Um, so Steve's asked, how do we um, install a different product that isn't showing in your material list? Um, so you can add in your own resources within the price book. Um, so again, we'll look at that and we'll go through the process of doing that next week. So, um, but if you want to know a quick um, explanation of how to do it. So if you, from the dashboard screen, if you go to the library, and then open up your master price book. From within there, there's um, an option to add a new resource. So if you click new resource, you can add in the description of your product. So if it's 100 mil cavity insulation bats, you can add them in. You put the price in. Um, you can add in the wastage factor for those for, for that. Sorry, um, if appropriate. But we'll we'll go through that stage by stage um, next week if if you think that will be helpful. Um, that's no problem. So yeah, from within this resources wizard, you can obviously swap to the uh, resources that are already in your price book. Um, so if you wanted a resource that wasn't in the price book, you would need to add it in. Okay, so um, was that everything I wanted to show you in, your, in the resources wizard? I think it was. So hopefully you're beginning to understand that you can um, swap materials here. I'll just show you quickly, the bottom drop down box allows you to move between between materials and labour, plant, subcontract and sundry. So if you wanted to swap um, a labour item or a plant item, you can do that um, by selecting labour here. In fact, what you might want to do um, is look at the labour rate for fixing your cavity insulation. So if I hold my mouse over there, we can see the gang that is fixing the cavity. Excuse me a second. The gang that is uh, fixing the cavity insulation is a two-in-one brick bricklaying gang. Um, but it might be that we need to change how long it takes them to fit this insulation. It's a different type of insulation. The board will need taping. Um, it's going to take longer uh, to fix. So if we click Edit, Build Phase and Usage Factor. So it's the usage factor we want to change this bit. And then click on the calculator. Read through the workings to understand what the software is saying. So it's saying it takes one hour for this gang to do 28, just under 28 square meters of cavity insulation. Um, but you might say, actually, with this new insulation type, I'm just throwing out illustrative figures that they're, they're not necessarily correct. You might say, well, they're only going to do about 14 square meters in an hour. It's going to take them twice as long to do it with this different insulation type. So you can change that there. Click OK. And now, of course, it's going to be more expensive per square meter for them to fit that insulation. So click OK again. So this time we didn't change the resource that we were using. It was it's still a two in one bricklaying gang that's fixing the insulation, but we are changing their usage factor. So we're changing how uh, much time it takes them to do the job to do this particular task. OK. Again, we'll look at this in a lot of detail when we're looking at specs next week. Um, the idea with this training was hopefully to get you up and running with the estimating so you can see how the how the estimating engine works and then we'll go in and, and dig around in the underlying settings and do a bit more work on that next week once you understand how, the, how Estimator Express works. Okay, so I'm gonna click close for now to close out of our external walls. On the right hand side, you'll see there's a, a completed tick box. So once you're happy that you've estimated your external walls correctly, you can tick the completed tick box. That's just for your reference. You can untick it at any point if you realize you need to go back in and change something. But it's just a quick way of ticking off the sections that you've worked through. OK, so um, let's do another couple of construction elements. I'm aware that we're uh, quite short on time. Um, so I'll try and whiz through the next couple of sections, um, but hopefully show you the principles of how to estimate these different elements. So the next section deals with the floor. 
So the, the Quick Template has selected an extension ground bearing slab by default um, with a screed finish. But you can select again, as with every different element, you can select a different specification from the list. And there's a long list there, you'll see. So say, for example, you wanted the slab to be insulated, you could select extension slab, ground bearing and insulated. So I'm going to select the second one down. There's a one key figure here, the thickness of the slab. So if you if you knew that needed to be thicker, let's say it needed to be 150 mil, you can change that uh, just there. But of course, you can review the dimensions of the slab in detail. So if we click the DIMS button, the dimensions button, we can see uh, what the software has calculated already for the slab. So You'll see in the areas of slab box here, the software's uh, calculated that the total area of slab is 13.2 square meters. It puts the total area in here rather than showing us the width and length of the slab there. That's just how the software works. So um, you can check you're happy with the thickness of sand blinding and sub base, tweak them if you need to. And then we can click next. So you see here the thickness of the slab has been updated. You can change the figure here or here, or as you can see, it's a pink box. So you can change it in the, the standard settings as well. And you can save that for future use if you normally uh, need to use a thicker slab. So we've got another uh, a, a set of different um, details here to do with the slab. Um, so you can work your way through this. So is there a DPM? Is there insulation to the underside of the slab? And of course, because we've selected a specification with insulation, it has added it in there. Is there reinforcement to the bottom and top of the slab? That's set to no because we haven't selected a reinforced spec slab. Is the slab power float finished? So I'm going to set that to no. So just select N for no from the box. And then click next and then the final screen just deals with the plant allowances for um, preparing and laying this concrete slab so we've got some default figures in there but you need to just review them quickly and make sure they're appropriate for your job so say with this extension we had um, an existing patio that we needed to break through you may say right we need a little bit more excavator time we need six hours of excavator time um, the box will turn red because you've overridden it, but don't worry about that. Um, we're deviating from the template, but of course, with elements like this, it needs a bit of human judgment, um, so that's fine. So you can review the rest of the details there. How many days are you going to need a plate compactor, wheelbarrow, sh shovel, bolt, bolt croppers? Uh, we don't need to use those, so we can set that to zero. Number of days for a Concreting vibrator, number of days for a power float, and number of collections, uh, deliveries and collections for the plant. Okay, so you could just tweak those as you need need to. We'll leave the rest set as they are, and then click finish. Just having a quick look at your note, Richard, you're saying you've changed the thickness of the slab. But it's reverted to 0.1 in the slab details. Try changing it in the slab details and see if it up updates on this screen. Sometimes I think it's if you, if you maybe don't click off, you know, click elsewhere on screen. I'm not sure. Um, maybe it didn't register your change. So try changing it in the slab details and hopefully you'll see it updates here as well. Okie dokes. So of course we can also review the resources for the slab, um, but for now we'll leave them as they are. I'll just quickly show you the, what the screen looks like. So it works in exactly the same way. You could swap any of the resources here using that resource use drop down box. Close that for now. So you could review the, um, the screed floor finish in exactly the same way. We shan't do that now because I want to show you some different elements of the job, but um, one key item that you may wish to review is the insulation to the underside of the slab. That's the, that's the one 
uh, resource that you might need to change. OK, so I'm going to click completed for now. And we'll have a look at the roof. So the software has specified a cut roof by default, but you could select a truss roof if you needed to. Um, the internal finishes is currently set to plaster and insulate a flat ceiling. So it's assuming it's a flat ceiling. Um, but let's assume we're doing a vaulted ceiling. So you'll see there's an option to plaster and insulate the rafters. So that's the one we want. So if we select that. And we can then click the dimensions button to have a look at the dimensions of our lean to roof. So this is actually a really, really quick exercise. You'll see all of these dimensions are highlighted in green. That means they've been taken from the main quote template dimensions. So the software has calculated all of these dimensions based on the, um, the width and length of the extension and the wall thickness. So now we've specified our walls, it knows that the walls are 300 mil thick, so it can work out the clear span of joists. So it just takes the width of the uh, extension and, and subtracts the wall thickness. It does that math for you. So everything here should be uh, correct and um, as expected. So the soffit width again comes from the main quote template. Um, but there was an input there, uh, hopefully you remember, for the um, soffit widths. So it should all be set up correctly. It's inherited the uh, pitch of the roof from the main quote template. So we said it was 22 degrees. That's filtered down through to here. So if we click next, you'll see here, this is where we specify joist centers, obviously not relevant to our vaulted ceiling, but that would be where you changed it if you had a flat ceiling. Rafter centers, those dimensions, as you can see, they're pink. They come from the standard settings. So if you've updated them in your standard settings, they'll be updated here. And you'll see again, all of these figures, ease length, soffit width and so on, they've all um, filtered down from the main quote template. So not much to do here, really. Click next again. Now the software has worked out the length of abutment. It does that by default, whether there's an abutment or not, it works out the length of it. You'll see the number of abutments is set to zero. But if there was a gable abutment, you could set that to one, or if there were two, you could set that to two. Um, the other thing that you might um, just want to check is your spacing of your tile lath. We updated that on the main quote template. So we said we were using a modern pan tile. So it's set to 300 mil. Again, that's fed through to uh, the roof itself. So you remember I mentioned about sarking board. If you updated your settings to um, include it, that would be set to yes. So we've got insulation to rafters set to yes and insulation to the ceiling set to no because, of course, we're doing a vaulted ceiling. So there is absolutely nothing we're changing here. Really, I'm just showing you through what the software, talking you through, showing you what the software is doing, but there isn't actually any work uh, to be done. And then, of course, the plastering and decoration, again, is based on the settings that we selected right at the beginning of our estimate. So it's not decorating barge boards, barge boards, excuse me, fascias and soffits because uh, we we said we didn't need it. It is decorating, plastering and decorating the underside of the rafters, but not the flat ceiling because it's a vaulted ceiling. So as you can see, we've changed absolutely nothing in there um, because Estimator Express has done the work with you, uh, work for you. So if we click finish. As you can see, all you're doing here really is checking the data, check it, checking it makes sense, check, check, checking that you haven't made a mistake with what you've entered into the main quote template um, input boxes at the start. Again, you can review your resources for your roof and make any changes um, if you need to. But we'll take completed for now. So we now have the opportunity to add a structural opening. The structural opening section, as you can see, works slightly differently because the first thing you need to do is use the drop down box to select an opening type. So you could either put an opening into a new wall. So I guess if you were uh, doing an extension, doing an extension onto um, 
a kitchen you might also be putting in a structural opening um, between the kitchen and the dining room for example so um, you could be putting an opening into a new wall as well so there's that option there but the one we want is the opening to the existing wall because of course we want to form the opening between the extension and the existing property so when you select opening to existing wall you then get a list of different templates um, so all you need to do is select the template that sounds most um, appropriate for the job you're doing. Small structural openings are openings up to about the size of a door. Uh, larger openings uh, require one of the bottom options. So if we select the structural opening medium opening, you'll see that's suitable for about 3 to 3.6 metres. So select structural opening medium opening, then click OK. You'll then be prompted to type in the number of openings, number of stru structural openings of this size and specification. So it's just the one in this case, but of course, if you're doing a, a couple of identical ones, you could type in two and estimate them all in one go. So click OK. So of course, with our opening into an existing wall, the software is going to estimate the formation of the opening um, into the connecting wall of the existing building. So the dimension wizard comes up now. So here we can tweak the opening of uh, the width of the opening. So it could be say 3.3 meters wide. So the height of 2.1 is pretty standard. So we've got the, the reveal depth set to 300 mil, but that could be tweaked if it needed to be. Lintel bearings at each, each end set to 150 mil. Fairly typical, but it could be changed if needed. And then we've got some options to do with the uh, pad stones and bricks and slates for packing out. So it's set to estimate pad stones. At the moment it's saying no bricks are needed and four slates are required for packing. So you can tweak those as you need to on a job by job basis. Bulking factor for spoil, that works in the same way as bulking factor for your um, excavated soil, excavated material. Basically, how much more space will these bricks, blocks, whatever it is, take up in your skip than they do in the wall? And they take up roughly twice as much space in your skip. So that is used to work out the volume of skip space required. And then we've got the wall thickness there of this existing wall. That's used to calculate how much spoil is used so there's nothing to do there click next and then this page just deals with the plastering so as we set the uh, main quote template to plaster and paint throughout the job it's included these options plastering and decoration options as you'd expect so it's going to plaster and um, paint the reveals there are options here to change the spacing of the noggings to the steels and the length of the noggings if you need to and then you can type in the number of angle bees needed you can change that if appropriate so if you're happy with all the plastering details we can click finish one final thing you need to check this drop down here tells the software where the wall opening is going to go so what we want to do is make sure the software knows that this opening is going into the existing connecting wall it's not going into another existing wall. Um, and the reason for that is that it will net off the area of opening when it comes to plastering the connecting wall. So it knows that we've got that 3.3 meter by 2.1 meter hole in the wall, so it won't um, estimate for the plastering uh, to that area of wall. If you were putting the opening in another existing wall in the house, then you could select the other uh, option there. And then of course it wouldn't net the area from here. Okay, so I think what we'll do, we'll go through the plaster into the connecting wall and then we'll look at how we can add a door and window and then we'll move on um, to some 
prelims and, and subcontract quotation costs. So Paul's asked, can we include, include both if both forms of opening are, are required? Absolutely. So we've just opened, we've just added one opening type. But say, um, I've just realised that when I was talking about openings to new walls, I was talking absolute rubbish. The openings to new walls is if you are constructing a new wall and you want an opening in it. Um, so if you're doing a new build with a structural opening between the kitchen and the dining room, then you would want to select that opening to new wall because um, what it does is it um, emits that area of bricks and blocks or um, it would just be block work, wouldn't it? In that case, block work um, from the wall estimate. So um, if you had if you did want to add in another opening, so let's say we wanted another opening let's say a small structural opening into a single leaf wall this is just for argument's sake you're putting another door in uh, for the client elsewhere there's going to be one of these openings we'll leave that all set to the default uh, settings so you can see it's a door size opening by default but you could use it for a hatch or another opening that you needed click accept defaults and you'll see it's added in another line for that particular opening and we could say that that goes in an other existing wall so in that way you can add multiple different opening types different sizes you could have a long list of openings there if you needed to if you make a mistake um, you can delete the opening out using the delete button on the right hand side there's also a button here to copy an opening so if you wanted to copy one and edit it you can you can also go back into the dimensions wizard using these buttons here or look at the resources using these buttons here. OK, so whizzing on because I'm conscious that we're running out of time. Um, so plastering to the existing connecting walls. You can select a different spec for the internal side and for the external side of the wall. So if you look at the various um, specification options here. So obviously, because we're estimating an extension, which by its very definition connects to an existing building, we need to plaster and decorate the connecting wall on the internal side of the existing wall and also on the extension side. So that's what it means. The internal side means the internal side of the existing wall and the external side means the, the external side of the existing wall. You can select whichever spec you need uh, for your particular job. So if we go for, say, plaster and skim on interior of existing wall and replace skirtings, yeah, we'll go with that one. And then on the external side, let's say plaster and skim on existing wall, add skirtings. You could add insulation if you needed to as well. So just select whichever spec is most appropriate. The default plaster system, as I, um, I mentioned earlier, is dot and dab. If it were a two story extension, you could select different specs for the upstairs walls as well. You'd have a second drop down for each of those, for each side of the wall. So as I said before, that the what the quote template will do is it will take the wall dimensions from the diagram that we um, added at the top. So it will take these wall dimensions here. It will subtract the area of the structural opening that we said was on the connecting wall. And it will then work out the remaining area for plastering and decoration purposes. But the key thing is that you must indicate that the structural opening is within the connecting wall in order for it to make that omission. Otherwise, it's going to overestimate uh, your, your plastering on your connecting wall. OK, so we're going to click completed there. Let's whiz through and add um, our bifold. So all of the opening uh, sections work in a very similar way. You have to start by selecting the opening types, the door type, the window type um, that you're going to add. So you see we've got um, a long list of different door types that we can add. Um, we have a partnership with Crystal Direct and what that does is it allows us to select uh, real items from their catalogue. 
Um, so we can select crystal direct ones or the software also has template templated doors. So these are templates with um, with sensible uh, priced doors in basically. So what we want is um, a bifold door. So if you, you can click select templated bifold doors. Again, as with the um, structural openings, you can add multiple different door types in. So you can have within this section, you can have um, front doors, patio doors, internal doors uh, are obviously covered elsewhere, but you can have multiple different door types and you can have um, obviously several different doors of each different type. OK, so let's say we want a 3600 wide aluminium door. So let's go with the third one from the top. Bifold patio doors, aluminium, 3600 by 2100, five panel. You can see there's also hardwood and softwood and UPVC doors if uh, required. Then we're going to click OK. Again, we're being asked how many of these doors have we got. So just the one in this case, but for a bigger extension, you might have two. You could type that in and, and double up on all the costs. So leave that set to one, click OK. And after a moment, then our bifold appears on the list here. And it's telling us there's one. You can change that figure there uh, if you realise that you needed to uh, add another one in. You could do that there. That's fine. If you add the wrong door or you decide to use a different one, click the delete button and add a, another one in. And as I said, you could add a different door type in. So if you needed a, um, a pedestrian door, so a back door adding in, you could select that option and add that in. OK, we'll say that's complete for now. Adding windows, it's exactly the same process. So click on the drop down box. Let's say we're going to add a templated PVCU windows. A templated PVC U window, I should say. Um, then we select the window size. So let's say we're going to go for 112C, 600 by 1200, top window. Click OK. I'm very conscious that I'm speeding through this now. Um, but hopefully you're getting a the hang of it, getting a feel for how the software works. Um, and there you go, you can see the window's been added in. With windows, you can also add a uh, top treatment, so a stone head or brickwork arch. You can add some detailing in there and you can also add sills in. And it's the same for um, doors as well. You can add arches and stone heads in if you need to. OK. So I'm going to click completed for now. Um, so Steve is saying you're not sure installation costs for bifolds are quite right, seeming a bit on the cheap side. Um, that's something I can speak to to Tom about and get him to chat to you uh, about it another time. Um, Rich is asking how we specify the colour of the frames. The um, All of the diagrams in there are just for illustrative purposes. So if you're using one of the templated doors, then the, the, we don't actually need to specify a colour. Um, if you are using one of the Crystal Direct doors, um, so if you're using Crystal Direct aluminium bifold doors, within um, this screen, you can specify your door color. So you can select gray doors um, if that's what you need. And that will give you obviously the real price. And what you can do is you, you can then send the quote off to Crystal Direct and they will get back to you and they might 
do you a bit of a deal. Um, so yeah, there's no, there are no frame color options within the templated Estimator Express ones, but within Crystal Direct, you can select your, your colors. Um, right, I'm just wondering, because I know we're due to finish in about 15 minutes or so, what would be the best way of using our last bit of time? I'll just, what I'll do is show you where all the preliminary costs can be added. Uh, I won't go through it all, but I'll just show you where they are. So at the top of your quote template, you have all of your construction elements. Um, but of course, you also want to um, include costs like planning and design costs, where appropriate, site establishment costs, any sundry plant, travel costs, scaffolding costs, and so on. So at the top of the screen, just under where it says main quote template, there's the jump to section drop down box. If you click on there, you can jump to a specific section of the quote template. So what I'd like you to do is locate the preliminaries and sundries section. It's got a pound sign icon about two thirds of the way down. Preliminaries and sundries, if we click on that, and you'll see it appears near the bottom of the screen. So if we click add estimating cal calculators on prelims and sundries, you'll see a list of um, quite a wide range of different um, prelims and sundry costs. So these are costs that you may incur before the job starts. Um, so things like planning and design, site establishment, costs that you have ongoing throughout the job, such as scaffolding, but they're obviously costs that are really easy to overlook, um, but will have a, a, make a big impact on your profit margins. So it's um, really important to make sure they're factored in. So for example, if I just show you planning and design costs, if we tick planning and design costs and click select. So planning and design costs, select that, and then you'll get this template selection screen. So just select the description that sounds most like the job you're working on. So there's a template for a large home, sorry, a large home extension for a new build or for a small home extension. So we'll go for small home extension. And what that does, the selection of the template um, um, determines what the default figures are in here. So obviously for a small home extension, the design fees are going to be lower than they are for a new build. So there's some um, starting point figures in here, but you're going to need to tweak them. So perhaps you've got a good deal on your architect's fees and it's only going to cost you £400. You can change that figure. You can obviously check your building reg, plan fees, inspection fees, planning application fees. Maybe we don't need any, so you can zero that out. Engineer, engineers fees, maybe there's a particular uh, quirk of the job and the, the structural engineers fees are 500 pounds. You can just update those figures. So what's really good about this is it's a, it's a prompt to you to include these items in your estimate. There's some starting point figures in there, um, but just adapt them as you need to for your job. Once you've done that, click finish and those costs will be added to your job cost. And you see it's increasing on the top right hand corner. So if I click go back to prelims and sundries and click add estimating calculators again, you'll see all those different elements can be estimated here. Your cleaning, fire stops. Um, Scaffolding services, you know, connecting up your services, site acquisition if appropriate for a new build, and so on. So unfortunately, I don't have time to go into uh, all of these in detail, or all of these at all um, today. But when you've got a little bit of time, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, you'll have a bit of time where you can um, carry on going through the software and exploring a little bit further than we can do within our couple of hours, um, and just finding your feet with it and where you would go to estimate these different elements. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel that for now. Just underneath, underneath prelims and sundries, if you scroll down slightly, we've got the subcontract quotations section. So 
you use the subcontract quotation section where you've been given a fixed price from a contractor for some work and you just want to add it to your quote. So click on the drop down box under subcontract quotations and you can see the various contractor types that we've got. If you can't find this, the specific um, contractor that you want, you can select general quotations. That's just a generic one, or you can select a specialist contractor. And then in the description, you can put what uh, the particular contractor is. So let's say we want to add a plumbing quotation. So select plumbing contractor. And then there's just three things we need to uh, type in here. So let's say um, in this extension, we need, I don't know, two radiators and of course the piping. So may you, maybe you've got a subcontract plumber who's going to come in and supply and fit the radiators and connect to the existing system. And he's going to charge us, I don't know, 600 quid. So the first thing we need to do is type in a description of the subcontract quotation. This will appear in the quote. So make sure you type it in um, so it presents well. So supply and fit two radiators. and connect to existing system. As an example, you can word it however uh, it makes sense to you. Um, the next uh, thing we need to do is enter the cost. So the cost that you need to enter is excluding VAT and excluding any profit. Your profit will be added on on top of this. So let's just type in 600 quid. And then finally, we have to select a build phase. Now, the example I've used, obviously, that's going to straddle two build phases, isn't it? But we'll put it on plumbing first fix. Once you've selected your build phase, click OK. And that uh, subcontract, subcontract quotation has been added in. And of course, you can add multiple subcontract quotations. So say you've got a landscaping contractor. Um, I don't know, let's just say replace fencing to rear a property. You don't need to do this at your end, but just to show you how you can add in multiple quotes. So there they are, look, so there's your cost, excluding profit and excluding VAT. So it's pretty straightforward, really, to add those uh, subcontract quotes uh, to your est estimate. So use that section when you're subcontracting out some work and the subcontractor is doing the work at a set price that they've quoted you for. And you're, of course, going to make your profit on top of that. If the particular contractor you need isn't in the list, select the specialist contractor or you can use the general uh, contracts option as well. Okay, so once you're happy with that, click completed. So Richard has asked, how do we add labour rates? And of course, labour rates are really important. That's going to impact on um, costs across the board. That is something we're going to look at next Tuesday when we look at the price book. So within your price book, as well as being able to set up your material rates, you can set your labour rates. Uh, all of the labour rates are set up uh, as hourly rates in the price book. Um, they have some kind of average UK prices, but of out of the box. But of course, there is such a great deal of variation that you do need to make sure you review your um, labour rates. So we'll go through that and we will update them next um, Tuesday. But if you want to have a look at that before next Tuesday, if you go to the, the dashboard screen, click on the library and go into the um, master price book you need to select the labor section of the price book and in there you'll see a list of all the uh, the laborers within the software that are set up and you can edit the prices um, of their their hourly rates from within there so but i'll talk you through it next next tuesday we're doing it a bit back to front in how we're doing it um but i felt it was important for you to see how the estimating side of it works and then we can go in and uh, look at all the the underpinning rates and specifications that are 
putting this estimate together. Okay, so the final thing I want to um, show you really quickly is how you can add rooms into your quote. So the room section uh, of the quote template allows you to estimate room renovations, fitting out, plumbing and electrics. So any uh, parts of the job where the room dimensions are required, because of course, if you're doing a, if you're estimating a more complex job, a, a large extension with multiple rooms or um, a house, then the software won't know the dimensions of individual rooms. It's a, it's a bit different with the um, estimate we're doing here because it's one, um, the, the project is one room, but in, in a lot of cases, obviously you're going to need to um, estimate items based on room dimensions. So decoration, renovation, flooring, wall tiling, that can all be estimated within the room section. Also, you can use the room section as a way of mentally separating out the tasks you need to do for each room um, so that you can ensure you've allowed for all of the components required within an estimate. So if you are estimating the plumbing or the electrics, for example, you can do that on a room by room basis. That's the way that um, a lot of people like to work. So we've built in that, that flexibility. So using the jump to section drop down box at the top of the screen, uh, we need to find the section called rooms. It will appear at the top of your screen, rooms. So we've got a drop down here, and this is where we select the room shape and configuration. So for the room in our extension, um, it's a rectangular room with a vaulted ceiling. So you can see there are flat ceiling and vaulted ceiling options. So select the fourth option down, rectangular room with a vaulted ceiling. Click on that. And then it will ask you what type of room it is. Um, so the room description is quite handy because um, the software intelligently uh, works out what items you're going to need for different room types. So it knows you're going to need something different from a bathroom in terms of your plumbing and electrics than you will need for a dining room, for example. So let's say this extension we're doing is a dining room. So select the dining room option, then click select. OK, so this is our room here. And it's asking for the dimensions of the room. So the internal length of our room will be 5.4 meters, won't it? And the width will be 2.7. Minimum height of walls, so it starts at 2.4, but then it has a pitch of 22 degrees. So it's picked that up from the main quote template. And the ceiling slopes upwards up the screen. Um, it's a bit of a tricky one, um, but if you imagine the, the diagram of the, the lean to extension, the wall is across the back here, isn't it? So the ceiling slopes up in that direction, so that's correct. Okay, so now we can tell the software about any openings in this room. So if we click link estimated openings, we can tell the, the system which of these openings is associated with this room. So the window, the bifold, and the medium opening that we've estimated, they are all in this room. So if we click OK, so the software now knows that all of those area of, areas of opening need, need deducting from the wall areas. So you can see how it's going to start to um, calculate wall areas, which will um, impact on uh, tasks that you do like renovation, um, wall decoration and so on. There are cases where you might also need to add existing openings, so not not ones that you've um, estimated, but ones that are um, already there in existing rooms. So in the case of renovation or any other tasks that you're carrying out in existing rooms in the property, you could, in theory, add existing rooms, uh, add existing openings, which we obviously don't need to do in this case. So once you have defined the dimensions of the room, I've just realised I've put the length of the room in incorrectly, haven't I? It's 4.4 metres long because it started, yeah, it's five metres overall, isn't it? 
Okay, so once you put in, the, you put in your dimensions, you've indicated which openings are in the walls of this room. We can then start estimating tasks for this particular room. So let's say we want to estimate the electrics. So we've got this button here that says add group of electrical items. So if we click on that, And you'll see you can add groups of electrical items for different room types. So if we click on living rooms, because this is a dining room we're working on, it knows from the description we selected that this is a dining room. There's one of them. That's correct. So if we click select, now what the software is going to do, it's going to select a group of electrical items that you might need for a dining room. So importantly, scroll down the screen here because it's, it's put them all at the bottom. So it's suggested we might need ceiling roses, two of them, light switches, three of them, wall lights and double sockets. So that's a bit of a shopping list, a bit of a starting point. Of course, you might not want all of those components. You might need to change the quantities. You might want to add some other items in. That's fine. So say, for example, we only want one ceiling rose. Change that to one. So highlight the figure in there, overwrite it by just typing in one. Three light switches, that's fine. But actually, the client doesn't want any uh, wall lights. So we can click delete worksheet. Are you sure you want to delete the wall lights? Yeah, we don't need them, that's fine. So we can remove those all together. So it's estimated three double sockets. But say the client has asked for a, a USB socket. So what we can do where it says electrical sockets, we can click add worksheet. And let's say we want a double socket with USB downstairs. That's correct, isn't it? Click select. Might need to scroll down again. So you can see we've got one USB socket. Maybe they want all of them to be USB sockets. We can change that to three. Um, and we could delete the standard double sockets. You can tweak it, play around with it, add things in, remove things, change the quantities as you need. So you can see how quick, very quickly you can estimate your electrical items on a room by room uh, basis. And you can add your plumbing items um, if you want to do it that way on um, a room by room basis as well. You can also, of course, add fitting out tasks to your estimates. So as well as the electrical items and plumbing items, if you click on the drop down box, you'll see uh, the list of all of the other types of uh, items that you can estimate on a room by room basis. So let's say we want to add some flooring in. So if we select fitting out and then we need to click add estimating calculators. And then it gives us a long list of different fitting out tasks that we might want to do. So let's say we want to use an engineered wood flooring, an Amtico type thing. Tick engineered wood floor, let's select it. So the dimensions of the floor is taken from the room dimensions we've added. There's a, a box here for the cost per square meter of the flooring. Let's say it's a premium product and it's 50 pounds a square meter. So change the, the cost of it. You can enter the length of perimeter beading, length of skirting to remove and refit. Well, that doesn't apply because we're, we don't have to uh, remove and re refit any skirting because we're just going to fit it afterwards, aren't we? So we can zero that. And then you'll see we've got a few other options for underlay, leveling, threshold bars and so on. I'm not going to go into detail with it now. Um, click finish. Always scroll down when you add something because it adds it to the bottom. And you can see there we've added that the, um, flooring in uh, for the dining room. So we've now added a, um, a dimension based item in. So there's component based items, electricals and plumbing items. And then there's um, the dimension based fitting out and renovation plastering tasks that you can apply to the room. With plumbing and electrics, take care um, to ensure you don't allow for these elements twice because you can estimate plumbing and electrics within a room. 
like we've done here or you can estimate them within the main quote template there's a plumbing and uh, plumbing and heating section within the main quote template as well so you can do it in either place but make sure you don't do it twice um, once you're happy that you've estimated everything you need to for this room, click close. And then you'll see that that room has been added to the main quote template. If you're going to do some renovation tasks in other rooms in the existing property, you could add some more rooms in there and um, estimate room based items as you need to. You can have as many rooms as you need within your estimate. You can keep on adding them. So let's imagine you wanted to estimate the cost of renovating the lounge in this house that we're uh, extending. So you could add the lounge as a room, enter the dimensions of the existing doors and windows, and then you could estimate using the renovation option. You can hack the plaster from the walls, uh, replaster and skim the walls, decorate them and so on. So this is how you can add uh, renovation tasks uh, on a room by room basis. OK, so that's the rooms uh, section, which is really handy. The last thing I really, really briefly want to show you, because I know we're running over now. If we scroll to the bottom, the very bottom of the quote template. There's an option to add additional templates. Um, if we click the add addi additional template button. Um, basically, the, there may be situations in which you want to add. Um, additional templates you might want to add a projection to a house so maybe you're estimating a house but we haven't quite got the configuration uh, that you're estimating so you could select a template and then add a projection on or perhaps you've estimated a house and you want to add a garage to the estimate you can do that um, so this allows you to um, create your own slightly more bespoke um, configurations using the templates that we've already got within the software. So you can kind of bolt them on. However, if you want to estimate several houses, so if you were doing a small housing development, you would estimate each house in its own separate estimate. So they would be a separate job. And then if you have um, enterprise edition of Estimator Express, you can then combine the jobs together in a group of jobs. And you can look at the build program for the, the set of houses and you can look at all the reports with the combined data for all of those houses. So if you want to do multiple houses, they need to be within separate jobs, basically. But if, for example, um, you were doing a house and you wanted to add a garage onto the side of it, then you could add a garage projection. Or um, if you'd done a house and you needed to add an extra um, valley projection like this, you can do that using the additional templates so that creates that extra flexibility for you. OK, so what will happen is I'll put the the it's called a, it calls it a poll, but it's just a quick um, quick fire question. So the first one is, how do I add electrics and plumbing costs to the quote? So you can select one or multiple um, options there. So would you add electrics and plumbing costs using the appropriate electrics or plumbing section, using the room section or using the subcontract quotations section? So if you could just tick any or all options you think um, apply. Um, it won't show me who said what. I just get percentages at this um, end. So it just tells me what percentage have voted. OK, so it looks like you've all responded. Um, so the correct answer is all of the above. So you can add electrics or plumbing in the relevant section. You can use the room section like we just did at the end, or you can add those costs in as subcontract uh, quotations. So depending on your job, whether you need to add them as subcontract uh, costs or whether you are um, going to be doing the work yourself and you need to add it to the, the main estimate, you can use the room section or the electrics and plumbing sections as appropriate. OK, next one. So the next question is, 
what figure should I enter for any subcontract quotations? Should it be the quote amount plus VAT and profit? Should it be the quote amount plus VAT but excluding profit? Should it be the quote amount excluding VAT and excluding profit? Okay, you've all correctly identified that it's the third option. So put your subcontract quotes in X VAT, X profit. Throughout the software, actually, all of your costs are estimated, excluding VAT and excluding profit. And then you can add VAT on as appropriate for your company. And you can add your profit markup um, as determined by you. So you can set that percentage. So all the costs throughout your estimate are excluding VAT and profit. So that was great. Thank you for that. So I rushed over this at the very end. Um, it's about how you estimate an, an additional part of a job. So, for example, a garage to go with a new build that you've already estimated. So if you want to estimate an additional part of a job, should you go back to the dashboard screen and create a new job? Should you use the additional template section or is that something you can't do? Place your votes, please. So, yeah, you guys are good at this. So, yeah, it's the middle option. So you can add on extra bits to a job using the additional templates section. The only scenario where you need to create an entirely new job is where you're doing multiple um, standalone new builds. They need to be estimated as separate jobs. So well done. You guys were paying attention even after two hours of listening to me. I'm imp very impressed. OK, last one then is how can I change a specified resource within my estimate? Using the mini spec options at the top of the quote template, using the resources button in the relevant section of the quote or both of the above. How can you change specified resources? Okie dokes. So the correct answer is both of the above. So the mini spec options allow you to swap uh, materials such as the price allowance for the brick, the tile type, um, the guttering system, the fascias, barge boards and soffit system that you're using. So you can make changes to certain resources using the mini specs. That's at the specification section right near the top of the quote template. And then within each uh, section, so within diff different elements of the estimate, you can also fine tune the resources there. So we looked at swapping the plasterboard and the insulation, didn't we, within our walls. So you can do it in both places. but um, for different uh, resource types. So that's entirely correct. Okay, so thank you so much for your time this morning. I really hope you found it useful.